Welcome. This is Rachel Kreider. You are listening to the Born to Prosper show. We are streaming live just outside of Santiago, a little place called Viña del Mar in South America, Chile. Today's episode is all about synchronicity. to be hanging out with you guys. As I was saying earlier, today's show all about synchronicity. You know, those little meaningful coincidences that take place from time to time. And our main host for the show, Mr. Shane Kreider, is right here with me. Welcome, all Shane. All right. Well, th thanks for that, Rach. And uh, yeah, very excited to be here. Synchronicity is one of my favorite concepts for sure. And, um, you know, it takes me back to uh, my very first, I guess, beginnings in personal development, being an entrepreneur and all that. I, uh, well, back to 1998, Rach, as you know, in 1998, I was a, uh, not so happy, pretty much broke blue collar worker. Uh, I was putting in car stereos, but about 80 hours a week and I was 26 years old and I just really had enough and I was ready to transform my life. You know, I felt like I was working so many hours and had just so much invested into what I was already doing, had no extra time, no extra money. I really didn't see how I can change my life. But I had a bit of a mental shift take place and I kind of took myself on a journey and without even realizing it, I, I, it absolutely transformed my life. I had no idea where, where I was going to be going with it all. But as I started to move forward, there was a, um, there is a key concept that I learned very early on in my journey and it was a big difference maker. But interestingly enough, I actually started to employ this concept even before I even knew what it was. And that's what this, this whole show is all about. So if you guys are ready to experience some extraordinary transformations in your life, both short-term and long-term, this little concept right here not only is effective, but I think it's probably about the most fun you can have with any of the personal development concepts that I've come across. So uh, so with that, um, yeah, Rach, what's coming up for you on this concept of uh, synchronicity? Well, meaningful coincidences, that's how it's um, defined or one of the ways that um, that it's defined. But synchronicity, it's, you know, you might be thinking about somebody and all of a sudden the phone rings and it's them. And we've all experienced this from, from you know, certain times. Probably one of the most uh, memorable times that I can remember synchronicity playing out in my life, Shane. I'll, I'll share a little story if I can to kind of get things kicked off. It was, uh, well, um, I'd, I'd been on the journey of personal development since I was like 19 years old, taking two steps forward, three steps backwards with respect to creating results. And it was just before I bumped into you and, and your business, it was a point in my life where I was I was kind of going nowhere fast. I was, was not succeeding uh, in a business that I was running and very much at a crossroads. You know, do I go back and get a job or do I continue on this path of attempting to become a successful entrepreneur? And like I said, I'd been on the journey of personal development and I'd been reading The Secret. And you guys have probably all heard of The Secret, the like thoughts create things, law of attraction. It got a lot of publicity, et cetera. So I was reading The Secret for like the third time. And I was in the bath at this particular point in time and there was a concept in there that I wanted to learn more about. And to do that, I got out of the bath, I'm dripping wet, went to Google and Googled this concept, stumbled across this website, which actually led me to your business. And the gentleman that called me up to interview me, he, as a part of the interview, he actually said, are you familiar with the secret? And I'm like, I might be. And this was the next day. And what do you know? I'm, I'm, laying on the bed at this point, reading the secret again. So just these little, I don't know, these little breadcrumbs led me to what I'm doing now. And it was a, a big turnaround from, in terms of success, I was not creating success all of a sudden, these little beautiful, you know, um, synchronistic events took place, which led me to make a powerful decision. And here we are all these years later, but um, anyways. Well, that's, that's very cool. And you know, one of the things that comes up for me on all of this is I've been studying personal development since 1998. I got into it when I became an entrepreneur. 
Um, very quickly, as I became an entrepreneur, I started meeting some, well, I wanted to find people that were having the kind of success and living the kind of lifestyle I was, I wanted to live. So I went out looking and I found some folks that were very entrepreneurial minded and they were in business for themselves and they were taking advantage of some of the trends and the timing of what was going on at that time period. And they were really successful. And that's what I was looking for. I wanted to find that thing that I could model. I knew I wasn't going to reinvent the wheel, but I wanted to find that thing that I could model. And I, and I ended up getting started in a business with these guys. And one of the first things they told me is you need to change the way you think in order to create the success that you want. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I just want to go to work and be successful. I said, you know, your biggest limiting obstacle is your mind and it's the way you choose to think about reality. You know, it's your it's your paradigm. It's your it's it's what you believe to be real and true and possible. And all these things is exactly ha is what has you creating the life that you have. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I think it's just that I haven't found the right job or the right business yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was my experience at the beginning. But very quickly I realized. I mean, we live in a world with 7 billion people. There is more opportunity around us at any given time than we could possibly imagine. Why is it that one person is going to seek it out, discover it, act upon it, and create success, and the other person isn't? You know, it's like, and, and so making money was an issue for me and, and having some time freedom. It was a big issue for me. It's something I didn't think I was ever going to be able to get my head wrapped around and actually change in my life. Another one was my physical fitness. I was overweight. I was out of shape. Um, my physical fitness was just going down and down and down. I mean, I'm 26 years old. And I remember I went with one of my buddies. I was living in Arizona. We, we, we went and hiked up Camelback Mountain. It's an elevation of about 1,250 feet, I think. And I'm struggling. I mean, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm walking up and I'm struggling. And I'm climbing this mountain. And this guy that was like 65 or 66 years old, passes me like there's no tomorrow. He just zings by me. And I'm like, what in the world? Mm -hmm. This guy passed me twice. He went up and down and back up and back down. And the time it took me to go up and down one time. So you're 26 and he's like 66 or thereabouts. Yeah. He's yeah. A bit of a wake up call. That is. And, you know, but I knew that, I mean, have you ever had something in your life? I mean, have you ever failed to transform your life in any different way? Absolutely. I've been on that roller coaster of I guess, really attempting to create something, but it, it felt like you had the a couple of people on your back, you know, <laughs> um, just the, the effort involved to, to crawl up that mountain. Um, yeah, I've, I've been there. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I've, I tried and failed. And I mean, physical fitness was one of the things that was a big thing for me that I just couldn't get. It just didn't change. You know, I could go on a diet, but I would gain it back. I would start working out. But then I would slack off. I just couldn't stay consistent. Um, but also finances. I mean, my finances were constantly moving backwards, no matter how hard I tried. I tried getting extra jobs. I tried working extra hours. I tried working extra hard. I, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. And, you know, I mean, I was 26 at the time. But when you're 26, you don't realize that you're young. And you don't realize that the six or seven or eight years of experience that you have is really a small scale of what can possibly happen in your life. But for me, I mean, that was all of my reality. And I started to feel like life couldn't change at that point. Like, I mean, I was cruising along and, you know, when you're young, you're hopeful and you think anything can happen and things do happen, but then things sort of start staying the same. And then you start trying to change things, but then they don't change. And then you kind of get stuck in the mud. When you're young, you look at all the older folks and you're like, what's What's wrong with these people? Why can't they just change and transform and have fun and be excited and do cool stuff, right? But as you start getting older, you're like, wow, I'm becoming one of those people. And I realized at the age of 26 that if I don't make a serious change in my life, I'm going to, you know, it, it just isn't probably going to happen. Like, I don't know. I have to, there's something I need to know, something I need to understand. And I came to a certain point in my life, I want to share with you guys in just a minute, but I came to a certain point in my life where I hit a crossroads and it was a decision that I made from there allowed me to get onto a path of synchronistic events that just transformed my life so quick and in such amazing ways. And life went from being an absolute struggle to a fun, exciting game that 
I felt like I could win at. And I was able to have a lot of success in the short term, but I had so many challenges, so many things that needed to be handled and transformed that it, you know, I was able to handle my finances really quickly. And then I was able to get on the other side of my health situation quickly, then relationship issues. And it, it just one thing after the other, but it, it just ended up being year after year after year of just significant, unbelievable life transforming wins and, um, and some exciting stuff. So I guess before we get into the topic, what I'd like to do, Rach, I'm somebody that knows what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like to have life not change. I know what it's like to get a little bit more and more grumpy and irritated as life goes on, mm -hmm. right? And I would see people that are successful and I just couldn't imagine what it would be like to be in their shoes. What is it like to be just grinding it out in life and then at one magic point, things really shift? And they stay shifted and things just start getting better and better, easier and easier, more and more fun. What is that? At? Can you describe the point in your life where things just actually start to take off? Well, my goodness, it was um, things started to take off for me once I bumped into you, <laughs> interestingly enough. Well, it wasn't quite into you. It was uh, into someone who worked for you. But anyways, um, our paths definitely crossed. And prior to that, I was someone who was on that treadmill attempting to create success for myself, but nothing was working. Um, like you've described, finances were in the hole, uh, relationships were not good, my health wasn't good, nothing was working. So it was uh, life was a struggle to accomplish a tiny little bit. And uh, for me, like I shared earlier, I was very much at a crossroads um, because my business was failing. I'm like, you know, do I have to go back and, and get a job or am I going to find something else? And I really didn't know which way to turn. And the, the story that I shared earlier in terms of um, reading The Secret and answering Michael's little ad and on the website, which led me here. And after that, it was so quick that things transformed for me. Literally within a couple of days of having that conversation with Michael, I was introduced to a brand new community of people, uh, which all of a sudden I jumped into, I guess, a new vibrational state. Uh, I went from having money going out the door through silly things like, you know, getting tickets for, you know, talking on my telephone while I'm driving or, you know, parking in the wrong spot or whatever, literally just money going out the door faster than it was coming in over silly things to all of a sudden I'm literally finding money everywhere. You know, like I would walk home a different way to what I was used to walking home from the, the restaurant and all of a sudden there's like 20 bucks on the side of the road or I'd get in the back of a taxi and there's there's money scattered all over the back of the, the taxi seat. So it was literally money falling out of the sky and this all took place after just a couple of little synchronistic events um, occurred and then from there it was just one synchronistic event to the next, to the next, to the next. And I, you asked how to describe what it feels like, um, I guess, to go from struggling to all of a sudden this brand new level of success and by the way Shane I mean as you know I mean seven months after this little um, synchronistic event took place in terms of the secret and have you read the secret yes I read the secret and, and off we went um, you know I went from really struggling to really succeeding big time in business I became a self-made millionaire inside of 18 months after that period of time from being very much you know at, at a point where things weren't working for me and it's freeing, you know, it makes you feel, I guess, lighter, um, happier. Here, well, first of all, here's what I like. First thing is you actually talk about your success in quantifiable terms. And I'm For me, it's each person, you know, the way we want to transform our life, it's a very personal thing. And we all have different priorities and we all have reasons why we have those priorities. For me, a financial transformation was in order. Um, you just can't create. I couldn't create the life lifestyle I wanted to in the world that we live in today without a massive transformation in my finances and in my time freedom. Rach, I know you were kind of experiencing the same thing with that. Um, and, you know, and I've talked to, I've met a lot of people that have been on the personal development journey for a long time, and not all of those people have got the results that they want to get. And a lot of those people don't even like to talk in terms of results. And for me, it's it's actually a bit refreshing to hear talking in terms of real world quantifiable results. I mean, for me, I have quantifiable results with weight loss and uh, just a physical health transformation, just joy and happiness. Although listening to this now, you probably couldn't quantify it, but people that have known me over the years, just my attitude, my posture, my energy, everything is just absolutely transformed. 
but finances as well. And I, as, as like you, have had a massive financial transformation, um, became a self-made millionaire inside of about two years of, of getting my hands on this information and choosing to become an entrepreneur. But all of those things were synchronistic events. And uh, so I've got similar things in my life. You know, I got I made a decision. I made a decision to move myself forward in life. I, I, I got on purpose at a time that I didn't think I was going to be able to get on purpose. And in doing so, um, you know, I really, it, it took me down a new path. So let me, let me, let me just do this. We've got to uh, be sensitive with time here for you guys. Um, we've got five things that we want to share with you guys. And let's just kind of cut to the chase and get to these five things. So, um, I'll start here at the beginning with my story. The first thing you need to do to start having synchronistic events, and as we as we move forward this, hopefully not only you learn how to start creating some of this stuff in your life, but you'll actually gain a little bit more context on what a synchronistic event actually is, what it feels like, what it looks like, and what it takes to open yourself up for it. But the first thing you need to do, imagine this. Imagine you form a very clear intention on what you want to create. Now, here's the caveat with that. It's so easy and so normal to think in terms of the context of your life so far when you set that intention. So for me, we think in incrementally, right? We think in terms of, okay, so I'm a blue collar guy. I'm putting in car stereos. I'm making 35,000 a year. I'm working 80 hours a week. Maybe if I could get a better car stereo job and make 45,000 a year, maybe 60 hours a week, which I actually found at the same time that I found an entre entrepreneurial opportunity. And I almost was tempted to go in that direction because it was sort of a sure thing. That's an incremental process. And that's what we have a tendency to do. I also tried to get hired about at about a hundred different sales jobs, any type of sales, just to get stop working physically for a living. And I couldn't, I couldn't get hired. I mean, I literally, I started out trying to get hired to, to be a car salesman. You know, I think it's a BMW dealer. Thought, you know, I like BMWs. So this would be cool. Couldn't get hired there. I lowered my sights. Thought maybe I could sell Toyotas or, uh, you know, then I lowered my sights. Maybe a used car salesman, right? Despite all the stereotypes, maybe I'll start to be a used car salesman. Nope. Couldn't get hired there. I went to, um, went to the oil chain shop. I thought maybe I'd be the sales guy behind the counter at the oil chain shop instead of the guy under the car, right? Nope. Couldn't get, I mean, I tried. I literally applied at a hundred places, got zero callbacks. And I mean, this can mess with your mindset. I don't know, Rach, if you've ever had an experience where you've really had things happen in your life that it just really messes with your mindset, but I started to really doubt myself. So, but in the midst of that, I thought, you know what? Clearly I'm not going to get hired by somebody else, whatever reason. People see something in me. I don't know. It just isn't going to happen. They see me as the blue collar guy. How do you make that change? I knew I was going to have to be an entrepreneur. It just made sense. If it's going to happen, I'm going to have to be able to do it on my own accord. So I knew I was going to be starting my own business, which scared me to death. I didn't have any money or time. So I didn't know how it was going to happen. But see, that's the caveat. You don't know how it's going to happen, but you got to open yourself up anyway. So I created the clear intention. This is what I want to see happen. I want to see... I want to be a business owner. I want to be able to start a business and I want to be able to start a business that has a proven track record, a proven model. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I want to be able to work with people that have already had success with this business. That's a big ask. And it's something I didn't think was possible. But number one, you got to set the intention, whether you think it's possible or not, because our limiting belief will stop us from setting the intention. And if we're not on purpose, None of the bigger mechanisms that have come into play in my life that have really worked to set me free can come into play. If you don't have a destination, if you don't have a purpose, nothing that we're going to be talking about in this show or any of the upcoming shows can do anything for you. You got to set the purpose, to, but probably the purpose and the goal is outside of what you think is real, but you got to do it anyways. Rach, how do you set a goal that in all of your experience, all the context of life, you know that you can't probably hit. You know what? You, it's, I guess part of it is going back to your childlike state, giving yourself permission to just tap into that dream state again. And, you know, because, I mean, something that I learned over the years, Shane, with personal development, literally your only limit is your imagination. So I think as we get older and life starts to bash us around a little bit, it tends to have the effect that we want to lower our expectations as to what's possible. But the key really is to take yourself away 
go to the beach, go to the park, somewhere where you can actually just get into sort of that dream state again and just think, what would be my perfect ideal outcome? What is it? If, my, if, the, if, if there were no limitations, my wildest dreams could come true, what would that be? And then just sort of go for it. So that, you know, that sounds great. And if I'm listening to this, I'm thinking, wow, that sounds, oh, come on, come on, seriously, really? I mean, when I was 26, if somebody would have told me that, I would have said, look, buddy or gal or whatever, yep. you just don't get it. You don't understand the way my life is, but this is the four. These are five steps. You guys see them there, but let me just explain to you. This is my process. It's not just my process. This resonates with any of the processes I've seen out there. It's what I've learned. It's what I learned at the beginning, 1998, when I started my own journey. Some of it came a little bit intuitively for me once I actually started to let go. And I had to accept the fact that my life could, in fact, change for the better. That was a very difficult thing for me to accept, but I had to accept it because the alternative was too painful. So um, so here's the next thing. We need to We need to stop resisting the outcome. See, what I would do is I would say, well, here's what could happen, but... If I start to try to go down that road, I would use my mind, the power of my mind to predict negative outcomes, to try and protect myself, right? Mm -hmm. Like I thought if I become, and this is just real, this is, this was my life. I mean, my life, the biggest thing for me was to become an entrepreneur and make a lot of money, probably for the most selfish, you know, two-dimensional reasons a person probably could. I would like to think I've grown since then. But seriously, I mean, when you can't breathe, the only thing you want is oxygen. You don't care when, where, how. And that's the way I felt with my finances. I wasn't looking for a bigger purpose, a bigger mission or anything else. I just wanted to create some financial success to get a little bit more oxygen, whatever. But as soon as I would start to think about how, what I could do, immediately skepticism would come into my mind. Um, See, this is where I think I've got a bit of an advantage uh, in terms of like, I mean, I, I, I've, got, I've got some street smarts about me, but at the same time, I, I tend to take things just on face value. So when you asked me earlier about, you know, wanting to, how do you, you know, set the intention and start dreaming? I met a guy who was making big money, right? Like $100,000 a month. I met him and went, wow, I'd never met anyone who was earning income at that level before. But you know, maybe the person next to me doubted that this guy was actually achieving success at that level. For me, I just bought into it heart and soul and said, if you can do that, I can do that. And the little seed was planted for the first time in my life that I could perhaps achieve success at that level. And I went after it with this unbelievable knowing in my belly that if I just continued on that path, eventually I'm going to get there. And that's what happened. So I had this, I don't know, this I, I mean, my dad used to say I'm too trusting of people and I just believe everything that people say, but whatever. I mean, it's, it's working for me. <laughs> well, I, I will say this. You might learn some lessons with that, but you have to learn. You have to know for yourself. You have to, you have to learn your own lessons. Know for yourself is a concept that I live by and it can frustrate other people because other people try and help you. And I realized that if I kept taking the advice of the people that were around me, my peers, my friends, whatever, I could never have a life that they're not going to have. And I could look at their life and see that in 10, 15 years, their life is going to be just like it is today. They're going to be on an increment, incremental scale. And I didn't want to be on that. I looked around when I had the stereo job. I saw guys my age, 26 years old, that were entrepreneurial. And I always felt like I had it within me. I just never had the courage to do it. Mm -hmm. And they they were making it. They were making big things happen. The guy I met was making 50000 a month, not 100000 um, that's probably why I went on to yeah, my you, first step was 50,000 a month. Your first step was a That's a hell of a first step, by the way. Yeah. Um, well, actually it was sort of your second step, but that, that was your first step to really serious income. That was the seed that was planted. So isn't that forever grateful that the guy was making a hundred K and not 50 K because if he was making 50, that would have been the level that I would have seen myself at. It's so amazing how this thing called life works. <laughs> It it is, and it and it's how um, I mean the pictures we form in our mind. I mean, I met a guy who's making fifty k a month, and and I and, and just a series of and synchronicity. I mean, the first guy I met that was making that was a guy that came in, and I was working on his car. He had an Infinity this year. Next year he comes in with a BMW. The year after that he comes in with a new Mercedes, and I'm just like, dude, what are you doing? I mean, seriously. And what he was doing was some weird thing that I couldn't possibly duplicate. He was buying box car loads full of computers like in Asia and bribing the 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 customs guys and bringing them to some 
probably a sweatshop and having the, the, the workers take the little gold components out and then selling the gold. Like, how do you get into that? Like, I don't even know what that is. That, that was so far beyond me, but he was making 50 grand a month doing it. Um, I met another guy and he set up some phone room and he was selling, I guess, scalping like concert tickets and sporting event tickets. And he was making 50,000 a month. But again, I just couldn't duplicate it, but it started really getting my juices flowing. Um, I met another guy. He was a football professional football player player. And, uh, he played for the, for the Phoenix Cardinals at the time. And he came in with his Mercedes and I was putting a stereo in. you have to take the glove box out and a whole bunch of stuff. And in his glove box, he had a stack of $50,000 a week paychecks, but there's 50,000 stuck in my See, head. You could have duplicated. I, that. Could, I couldn't you, think of the week. It was you, too big. You, I, I got to say, no, it was, I meant about the professional football play a bit. <laughs> uh, are you saying I could have become a professional <laughs> football player? I, I don't think so. I, I I don't I don't think so. Um, I think you can transform your life in a lot of ways, but I also think you work with what you're given, and that wasn't my path. Right. So, uh, but synchronicity, and I opened myself up. But you know, this is it's exciting me, but it's depressing me at the same time because I just this isn't my life. This is and none of these things are going to work for me. And I got to a point where another year went by, and I had I had just about decided to accept that I couldn't have this kind of transformation. And then I hit a crossroads and I just could not do it. I could not accept it. And I said, you know what? I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know what, but I am just putting it out there that something magical can happen. I'm putting it out there that there is somebody that I can meet, something that I can stumble into. And it was about a week later, my buddy Mark, who I worked with, um, good friend of mine, he invites me to some meeting and, uh, and it sounded to me like, you know, one of these meetings that we've probably all been to that we decided we didn't want to do it. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. And I didn't go. And then the next week he invites me again. And as he invited me, he's like, look, what do you have to lose? And I thought, you know, and it just spurred in my mind. I'm like, I said I was going to open my mind. So I went to this meeting six months later, I'm making 50,000 a month working for myself out of the job. But that was a, that was, a, these are synchronistic events. But see, if I had not gained the purpose meeting the first guy with the infinity, then the BMW, then the Mercedes is making 50 grand a month. That was a synchronistic event. But had I not found so that was a little the bread, purpose, the breadcrumb, that, a, a, the seed was planted or the breadcrumb or whatever that opened up your mind to, well, you know what, maybe. So the little, little seed and you bought into the possibility for yourself, set the intention that, you know what, I'm not, I'm not too sure how right now but i see that in my future i'm going to go for it and then all of a sudden i mean that what happens is the universe rearranges itself right to deliver the circumstances the people the events etc to actually support you in what it is that you're looking to attain so support you in your goal your purpose which is just beautiful you know what and that's a here's the thing beliefs beliefs become self-fulfilling prophecies that's why in in laboratory experiments they get to do double blind experiments beliefs to a massive degree create reality and my beliefs at least maybe not a hundred percent I don't know I, that's hard for me to quantify because how fast my life has been able to change and how quickly I can transform things and it's not me it's anybody I see that really gets on the path I mean it's 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 you know coincidence is one thing but you see something happen a hundred times in a row you just can't chalk it up to coincidence anymore share the story because it was just beautiful like the universe these little, you know, beautiful coincidences to let you know if you're on the right path, despite adversity, because the adversity is going to creep up and try and, you know, push you onto perhaps a different path and just test how bad you really want it. But we were at, um, down in Vigna, the other, which is just the, the little town not far from here. We wanted to purchase a, a new remote control jobby to assist with this live stream. And over to you, Kreider. Yeah, well, basically, um, what ended up happening is, you know, I needed a new a new thing to, uh, I love buying stuff and I love, I love getting stuff for whatever it is I'm working on. When I was a, a mechanic and car share installer, I, I, I spent tons of money on tools and, uh, more than I probably should have, but I'll tell you what, if there was a tool, I had it <laughs> and I could always do the job. I'm the same thing with this though. And I need this little, this little thing. And here we are in, in Chile and it's, there's just, it's not as easy just to go out and buy exactly what you need, especially when it's a little bit obscure. And we don't speak Spanish. And we don't speak Spanish. So it's not easy to communicate um, exactly this obscure thing that you need. So getting a little bit smarter, I actually get a picture of it on my cell phone. So we go into the electronic shop 
And it's a little electronic shop. And I'm looking around and I don't see what that they have it. And I'm thinking that they probably don't have it. And I'm thinking we're going to drive into the major city, which is an hour and a half away. And just like, ah, whatever. But, you know, whatever. Just out there doing our thing, just on purpose. And so I got the picture on my phone. This is a synchronistic event. So we, um, we, we, we walk into the store. I see the guy, you know, he's helping somebody and we go stand behind him and he's like, just a minute, he's helping this guy. And he tells the guy just a minute, he goes in the store and comes out with three items, two items were the item that was on my phone. And the other item was something else. And the guy I was talking to actually needed the exact same item I needed. I would imagine they probably sell one or two of these things a year, like so obscure that it is. The guy that's in front of me actually needs it. And, um, and, but I don't know why the salesman actually pulled of two of them out because the guy only needed one. Yeah, it's right? crazy. Yeah. So, but the guy comes out with these two items and I'm just like, no way. Like this is, I'm holding my phone looking at it and I show the guy on my phone. I'm like, this is what I need. He looks at his hand. He's like, no way. <laughs> and he like does a double take and he looks at me again just to confirm you need this. And I'm like, yes. And again, it was another, she's like, you've got to be kidding me. Like how bizarre but see, these types of events before 1998, this is not what happened in my life. And since 1998, when I got on purpose, I opened my mind and I started following these five things that we're sharing with you guys. This type of stuff happened. This type of stuff started to happen all, all the, time. the time. And I call it the, the trail of breadcrumbs. You know, you're on the right track and you know, you're in the right mood, the right frame of mind, the right perception. You're thinking about things sort of in the right way from the right attitude when this type of stuff starts happening. And I mean, what happened in that moment? So it was it was a beautiful you know, moment whereby well, between the, the shop assistant in terms of his acknowledgement and recognition that, wow, that's so cool, that's so awesome. And all of us, the vibration all of a sudden went through the roof, right? We were already in there pretty happy and you know, chugging along. And, and so was he. He was kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. But all of a sudden, all of us just rose that little bit, which that's the key, you know, because everything in the universe is connected. We're attracting like attracts like. So the higher your vibration, the more you're going to be attracting of like kind of vibration. So the more good stuff is going to come to you. So this is how, you know, these um, synchronistic events and acknowledging them and following those breadcrumbs can actually lead to bigger and better things in one's life. Absolutely. So, um, so here's the thing. There's a zone that you get into. People call it flow. There's a lot of different things you can call it. But when you're in this zone, you become connected to almost a greater level of consciousness, a greater level of conscious awareness. All of a sudden, things are, are no longer like linear. They become lateral. You know, you hear a lot about lateral thinking. People that become very successful are typically able to have a lateral jump, a sideways jump. So instead of progression, which is what we talked about. People want to create success incrementally. They're able to think outside of the box. And that's another way of saying lateral thinking. They have a lateral jump onto a whole new path that where did this come from? Right. And that's what it takes to really, to really make this happen. So how do you get into the zone where lateral things happen? See linear, you go into the, into the electronic shop and you show the guy what you want and he goes and looks for it and brings it out. Lateral, you go into the stereo shop, into the electronic shop, and the guy goes to the stock room and brings you what you want before you even ask for it. Yep. And then we all get to revel in the magic of the universe. And the thing is, is it was so interesting to me that the kind of guy that was the participant in this situation, I mean, he doesn't speak English. I don't speak Spanish. But we and, had this deep connection understanding. But he, the, he, he got it. He connected with it instantaneously. As soon as he saw that on my screen, his immediate reaction was, oh, my goodness. But then it's like, what, reality? And it's like, oh, come on. This can't be. And it's like, no, it is. Wow. And then it was once again, oh, no, really? Seriously? It was back and forth. But how many people in life are just totally cut off of even accepting an experience like this? Now, see, I think about people that I've known that are kind of grumpy. Grumpy people don't tend to accept and nothing. I used to be very, very grumpy. So here's how do how do we, how do we make this transition? We have to form an intention and we got to suspend disbelief. We have to say, this is what I want to create. This is what I want to see happen. And I know that it's unrealistic and I know that it's not likely. And I know that all things equal in this world, it can't happen, especially to somebody like me. And I know that everybody I know knows that too. But in spite of that, I'm going for it anyways. I suspend the disbelief 
And that allows me to, to form this clear intention. Number two, stop resisting outcomes. See, the first thing that's going to happen after you make a choice. See, when I when I set out to set this new intention of becoming successful, and, and let me just kind of just roll through these so we can get through it. I see the time when we're going to wrap this thing up here real quickly. So I, I set I set the I, I set the um, the clear intention. But what do you think happens after you set that intention? Good things can happen and bad things can happen. What typically happens is when something bad, when something happens to take you off track, when something happens that makes you think you can't achieve the goal, you go backwards mentally and you give up a little bit of hope on that clear intention. You're you you're no longer suspending disbelief. You go back into oh, I'm back in reality now. And this can be a friend, a conversation with a friend or family member. They reel you back into reality trying to protect you. And in some cases, that's probably a good thing. But in a case where you're really ready to make this transformation, it's not a good thing. You got to be able to continue to suspend disbelief. So I got going. I went to this meeting. And after I got went to the meeting, I got started my business. I, I woke up to the reality that I had absolutely no time to work the business. I had no money to do anything with the business. And I had really squandered a little bit of time and money that I did have. And that started to weigh on me, but then I had to suspend disbelief. I had to say, magic can happen. Something can happen to make this change. So I put in, I realized I had some paid vacation accrued. So I put in for two weeks of paid vacation. A very synchronistic event happened with that. I told one of the guys that I worked with, not my buddy Mark, but this other guy, and uh, that I was going to try and start this business while I was on vacation. And if things went right, I wasn't going to come back. I was going to work my business. Well, he told the boss, the boss fires me the day before my vacation starts. And the boss tells me the acres of diamond story, which basically says, you don't know what you have until you, until you lose it. And it was about a farmer that wanted to become a diamond miner. And he goes out and sells his farm and tries to buy a diamond mine, loses all his money. Well, come to find out his farm was littered with diamonds in the rough. They look like these black lumps of coal that kept dinging his plow blade. And he, you know, he had what he wanted there the whole time, but just didn't have the perspective to realize it. My boss tells me that relating it to the job. That's a synchronistic event. All I could relate it to was this new business I got started with. I said, you're exactly right. Where do I sign? I had waves of emotion going on that were crazy. Excitement, fear, panic, all this stuff. So I, um, but that's a synchronistic event. It only was a synchronistic event because I was so on purpose. I thought to myself, I'm working eight hours a week at this job. I have to be able to create success in my own business working 80 hours a week, one way or another. And I choose that I'm going the distance, whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. Then it being a very synchronistic event, I took what my boss told me, I applied it to the business. And with, with uh, this guy that I knew that ended up helping me to get fired from my job, had I not guided, guess what? Two weeks into my business, when I would have been going back to the job, I had no results. Had I not got fired, I would have went back to the job. Getting fired was a synchronistic event because it allowed me to spend an extra two weeks trying to build my business off the ground. And then in that fourth week, I had massive success. I started making more money every week than I was making every month at my job. Had I not got fired, that wouldn't have happened. But see, I almost allowed getting fired to freak me out. I had an opportunity to get a job making 50% more for less hours. And I almost went down that road. But part of me was like this, I have to believe that this is possible. And because I chose to believe, I chose to have faith, I chose to back myself. I chose to, um, and in the missus, I mean, what do you have to do? You have to stop resisting the potential outcome. You get fired from your job. You're trying to start your business. You know, things can happen. How do you stop resisting potential outcomes? I had to realize that regardless of what happened, I'm willing to make some moves. I'm willing to be proactive in the moment. I'm willing to be on purpose. See, I'm not talking about manifesting reality by sitting on your butt. I'm talking about manifesting your reality by choosing what you want to create when opportunities arise, you jump on them and you do whatever it takes to make it go right in the moment. And if things start to go wrong, you're strategic and you move with the flow. And for me, I had to realize one of the concepts that I really bought into was is that when one door shuts, another door opens. And, um, and then no matter what happens, even if this wasn't the ultimate step, it's going to take me one step closer. I just got to, I just got to be on that path. And it allowed me to stop resisting the outcome. When I got started in my own business, the outcome I was resisting was failure, which kept me from wanting to spend time or money, which would have made me fail for sure. So I said, you know what? It's either going to work or it's not going to work. I'm going to go for it a hundred percent. And if, and if everything falls apart, I'm going to pick up the pieces after it falls apart and figure out a way to make it go right from that point. I stopped resisting the outcome. 
that allowed my mind to relax. Literally, when you allow your mind to relax, you hit a different level of brain waves that really opens you up in a lot of ways to different types of intuition, all this type of stuff. So seeing the time here, let's just wrap this up. You got to be able to be playful with your perceptions. You know, when I got fired from my job, I should have thought, oh my goodness, I better take a big step back. I got a family to support and all this type of stuff. But I decided to be playful. I decided to say, what happens if this is absolutely perfect? What happens if the universe is just testing me? Yeah, on one level, that sounds ridiculous. But on another level, you know what? What if? Who knows? Nobody can predict the future. I'm going to go down this path. I'm willing to pick up the pieces if it falls apart. If I'm willing to pay the price, I'm willing to give myself the space to be successful or to fail, whatever the case may be. So I had to become a little bit playful with my perception. I also had to trust my snap judgment because when I very first learned about the business in the moment, in the opportunity of learning about this business, my snap judgment is I can do this. And I had to trust that snap judgment. And even as time went off day after day after that, and things started to not go so well, you know, life happens and not every step is a positive step. I had to continue to trust that snap judgment. See, most people turn around and say, well, that's an omen. This happened. That's an omen. I refuse to do it. I said, my original judgment was I can do this. I continue to believe that. And I'm going to continue to act as if, and once again, if the pieces fall apart, I'm willing to pick up the pieces and, and whatever I got to do to put it back, right. I'm going to do it. I'm not too proud. If I got to start back further than where I was, I'm willing to do that, but I got to give myself the space. I got to give myself the chance. And then, um, and then finally it's just following the breadcrumbs, you know, it was one synchronistic event after another. And you got to be able to be playful with your perceptions to recognize the synchronistic event. So when I got fired from my job and the way all that went down, I thought, Hmm, maybe that's a synchronistic event. I didn't go back. I didn't, you know, I didn't go back to work. I, it took my fourth week to start making money and I actually started making some money. I'm like, man, that is so synchronistic because had I not been in this whole position, you know, that's, that's what would have, uh, I just never would have made it. And, um, and that's synchronicity. So for me, that's what's coming up for me, Rach. What do you want to say to put a bow on this real quick? Fantastic. Well, this call's been great. Thanks, guys, so much for streaming in. Synchronicity, um, let's see how it plays out in your life. And do tune in for the next show. We're going to be streaming once again here from Chile. The time has changed, however. New York, Wednesday the 20th at 4.30 p.m. That's going to be down under Sydney time, Thursday the 21st at 6.30 a.m. Details will be on borndeprosper.com. Thank you so much for your listening. We'll see you then. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.